The Baghdad battery comprises three nested artifacts. One is a small clay pot, originally taller but now standing at a height of 14 centimeters upon discovery, with its top broken off, thought to have been sealed with asphalt. Within this pot is a copper cylinder, serving as the second object, which itself houses the third object, an iron rod. It is believed that the iron rod would have extended through the stopper of the jar. The Baghdad battery is frequently referred to as the Wilhelm Koenig battery, named after the individual credited with its discovery. Wilhelm Koenig, a painter and archaeologist who later became the director of the National Museum of Iraq, did not provide any specifics regarding the location, timing, or circumstances of his encounter with the artifact. It is widely believed that the Wilhelm Koenig battery was discovered in what is currently the area of Kujut Rabu in Baghdad, Iraq. However, much like many aspects surrounding this artifact, the specifics remain uncertain. For instance, some suggest that Koenig uncovered it during an excavation in 1936, while others propose that it was found in 1938 within the basement of Iraq's National Museum. One of the few undisputed facts is that it originated from somewhere in proximity to the ancient royal city of Ctesiphon. However, its precise date of creation remains a subject of debate. Ctesiphon served as the capital of both the Parthian and Sasanian Iranian empires. While Koenig suggested it to be a Parthian artifact, dating back to somewhere between 150 BC and 223 AD, more recent archaeological analysis indicates it to be Sasanian. Even at the later end of this time frame, it would still significantly predate the earliest known description of an electric battery by Alessandro Volta on March 20th, 1800. Koenig's conviction that the artifact was an ancient Parthian battery stemmed from his publication titled A Galvanic Element from the Parthian Period in the German journal Research and Progress in 1938. In this paper, he presented his theory regarding the purpose of the artifact. The exact reasons that convinced Koenig of its Parthian origin may not be explicitly stated, but it likely involved factors such as the context of its discovery near Ctesiphon, its construction materials, and possibly comparisons with other Parthian artifacts or historical records. At the heart of the Baghdad battery, mystery lies the question of whether the artifacts in question constituted a functional battery cell. Koenig, the initial proponent of this theory, lacked ancient writings to support his hypothesis. To date, no such historical records have been discovered, leaving the true nature and purpose of the artifacts open to speculation and debate. Koenig likely arrived at the conclusion of the Parthian battery due to the presence of two metals with differing electrochemical potentials within the artifact. Such a configuration, along with the presence of an electrolyte, constitutes the primary components necessary for a battery. Additionally, there is evidence suggesting the possibility of an ionic solution or electrolyte being present within the jar. Furthermore, analysis of the corrosion on the artifact indicates that it may have once contained a substance akin to vinegar or wine, which could have served as the electrolyte. These observations collectively supported Koenig's hypothesis regarding the function of the artifact as an ancient Parthian battery. Indeed, the described Baghdad battery has demonstrated the capability to conduct electricity when paired with an appropriate solution, yielding approximately a volt or so of electrical potential. However, it's worth noting that if wires had been incorporated into the setup, the voltage could potentially have been amplified to a much higher level. Should the Baghdad artifact indeed prove to be a functioning battery, various hypotheses exist regarding its potential usage. Numerous suggestions have been made regarding the potential applications of the Baghdad battery. Throughout history, various civilizations have utilized forms of electricity in medicinal practices. One such example is the ancient Greeks, who discovered that applying electric fish to the body, particularly the feet, could provide relief from pain. One proposed theory is that the battery was embedded within statues of idols, potentially to create a buzzing sensation for worshippers, akin to a religious magic trick. This concept was actually tested in a 2005 documentary, exploring the possible historical uses of the Baghdad battery. Koenig posited that the battery served a purpose in gilding, a technique involving coating one metal with another. Historical evidence 
indicates that such practices, albeit using more rudimentary methods, were indeed prevalent during the period. Koenig's theory suggested that the battery facilitated electroplating, offering a simpler and more efficient alternative. However, critics of this notion highlight the absence of direct evidence for electroplating during that era or afterward. Conversely, ample evidence exists for alternative gilding methods, particularly through the detection of mercury residue, which was commonly used in traditional gilding processes. Critics of Koenig's theory highlight several flaws, primarily concerning the limitations of the Baghdad battery itself. The artifact could only produce a relatively low voltage around a volt, which would have been insufficient to power significant tasks such as gilding. Moreover, the absence of discovered wires suggests that any potential power amplification through wiring is unlikely, compounded by the lack of evidence for ancient knowledge of wiring techniques. Additionally, the need for frequent electrolyte refills, coupled with the apparent difficulty of accessing the jar's contents due to the asphalt stopper, presents practical challenges that would have made the battery inconvenient to use. However, perhaps the most damning critique is the absence of any historical mention of such a device, either during ancient times or afterward. If the Baghdad battery truly represented a significant technological advancement, one would expect it to be documented in historical records. Furthermore, the lack of widespread adoption or any evidence of similar devices in subsequent civilizations raises doubts about its practicality and effectiveness. These factors collectively cast doubt on the viability of Koenig's theory regarding the battery's purpose and usage. Many proponents of an alternative theory propose that the vessels comprising the Baghdad battery once served as storage containers for sacred scrolls. This hypothesis is supported by visual similarities between the battery's components and other known examples of scroll containers found in nearby sites like Tigris. Moreover, the discovery location of the battery amidst numerous similar jars further bolsters this idea. According to this interpretation, the iron rod would have functioned as a core around which the sacred scroll was wrapped before being inserted into the copper tube. Interestingly, Koenig himself referenced the prevalence of such scroll jars in archaeological excavations, adding weight to this hypothesis. The concept of the Baghdad battery as an ancient power source is undeniably intriguing. However, many argue that just because it could have functioned as a battery doesn't necessarily mean it actually did. Instead, it's far more plausible that it served as storage for scrolls. As Gerhard Eggert articulates in his article, the enigmatic battery of Baghdad. In my opinion, the magical container hypothesis is much more probable than the power source claim. The latter is a mystification by science of the object, which violates Occam's razor. Unfortunately, a new mystery surrounding the Baghdad battery emerged in 2003 during the invasion of Iraq when it was looted from the National Museum. Its current whereabouts remain unknown, hindering any further investigation into its true purpose.